Hey guys, I want to show you uh, the best way that I have found to learn a language. Um, and it's with an extension called uh, Language Reactor. And this is a little preview of what it looks like. Um, so I'm going to be getting into that. This, we'll come back to that after I give you a little bit of an overview. Um, and I also just want to tell you exactly how I like to use it, uh, which you know, just using the extension itself is one thing, but when you use it the right way, it's really, really powerful. So um, it's called Language Reactor. You can find it in the Chrome Web Store. Just search for it like that. You can see it's got a ton of users and really great reviews. Um, it used to be called Learning Languages with Netflix. Uh, you can learn more about it here. And um, when, this is how it looks in my extensions. You click that and it takes you to the website. It's a newer website they have now. And you can learn more about it. It's uh, for Chrome, coming soon for Firefox. You can use it for Netflix and YouTube, also for books and websites, which I'll show you all of that. Um, and it's got some other features, which I'll briefly cover. But um, basically, um, here's another website called what's on Netflix.com slash library. This is good for if you're in the US. Um, there are other sites where you can kind of find, I guess, I think I have one. Uh, this one's okay for finding uh, movies on Netflix based on your country. So the first website I mentioned is what's on netflix.com slash library and then they have you know Netflix by language. So they only have nine languages here but there's more languages supported on Netflix itself. Um, here you can do an advanced search and you can just you know uncheck all and just check your country and then like you know oh, I just want to look at movies and whatever you can do a filter to see and then it's kind of nice to sort it by the um, the IMDB rating um, that's kind of a nice uh, feature here so you can do like I think it's uh, the rating there and then that way you can find because you know Netflix they have their movies kind of kind of randomized so that you can see hidden gems and stuff and that you don't just see all the best stuff right away and then and lose interest so it's kind of a, a mixed bag so it's nice to see it this way uh, this does not have a language filter uh, but again if you're in the US this is what I would recommend and I've done that for Mandarin and I can see that there are uh, 152 Mandarin movies on Netflix a language reactor itself does have a Netflix catalog which you can also look at so these are three different ways to find good movies so if I want to find Mandarin um, hopefully available in the United States because if you're not aware there are different availabilities depending on what country you're in um, and then I can sort maybe by no I don't think I can sort by um, rating or anything here this I found to not be perfectly up-to-date this is pretty good but like I said this is this is very up-to-date so this is this is um, what I found to be most useful and you can sort by the IMDb rating, which is nice. So here's a, uh, some 8.9s and things like that. So this is how I found um, some movies to, to choose from. And then I've created a spreadsheet to kind of determine which ones I was going to work with first. Um, but you know what? Let's just go right into how the extension itself works. So if I click uh, Scissor 7... I can, <laughs> the funny little adult animation and all right so by the way I've known about this extension for a very long time but only trying it out again recently have I found it to be really really useful um, the original and, and that might be because there's some new uh, some features that I think are new that I'm really enjoying um, so basically uh, the original purpose of the extension was just to show you two sets of subtitles at a time, basically, where you can, as long as the subtitles are supported in Netflix itself, it's just pulling them from Netflix. So the audio is in Mandarin, which is the language I'm learning. And then, of course, my language is English, and it has that, and it also has the Mandarin subtitles. So therefore, it's able to pull both of them and stack them on top of each other. And, and it didn't have all this color system originally. Um, now there's some settings where you can, um, so the audio language, the subtitle language, and then of course the translation language, which is mine. Um, now I can do a machine translation on top of that. 
which I tried out for a little while, which I, is definitely useful. Um, highlight saved words, that's really useful. You definitely want that. Um, and that should be good. Okay, and then this I'll explain in a little bit. So this is the machine translation. So that's gonna be a little bit more of a word, closer to a word for word. It's not a word for word translation, it's very natural, but uh, this is sometimes, uh, because this is a subtitle track, sometimes they kind of take liberties in the way they translate it. Um, so this is definitely very much a contextual translation, kind of thought for thought, whereas this is going to be a little bit closer to the original language. Um, and so that's really useful. Um, once you get, I definitely recommend using both, um, but once you get a little bit further along in the language, then maybe you could get rid of uh, one of them. Um, and, and this is, uh, and, and try to go a little bit more for the thought for thought kind of is what I'm doing now. So I got rid of the machine translation now for myself. Um, and yeah, you can have the subtitles on the bottom or, or you can have them hovering over the video, which is how I like it. Um, okay, so we'll keep that like that. Um, and then let me show you this. So this is absolutely wonderful the vocabulary highlighting is wonderful. So basically what it does um, is you can set it so that all words above a certain frequency, uh, sorry, below a certain frequency are purple. So all the way up to the 10,000 word level. Um, so if you're a beginner, you would wanna select level one and then basically they have a corpus of all of the words, they, they have a massive corpus of generally like probably the top 10,000 words in, in Mandarin, um, the top most frequent used words man, in Mandarin in general. And those are corpuses you can find on the internet. So I'm sure they found one to use. Um, and basically then they order those words by frequency. So these are the, the, the most frequent maybe 30 words, 25 words here. Um, and then these are the next most frequent. They're, they're in chunks and these are all level one, but still kind of subdivided into further chunks within level one and then they have level two. And then the least frequent words are level eight. So I am currently um, at level two. I've chosen that. And that means that all words um, below uh, level three will by default be white. So this is one of those. Um, so this is a fairly frequent word. This is in the top 800. Um, and all words uh, that are less frequent or like, you know, in the 801, the 801st most frequent word, and then all words less frequent will be in purple by default. Okay, so um, that's how that works. So that's another feature I found out about uh, maybe like a year ago. And I thought it was cool. Um, but I, um, uh, it wasn't precise enough for me, but now that I, they have this feature of different colors where you manually select the colors, I think that's absolutely amazing to get that. That's a premium feature. You have to pay $5 a month to get that. Uh, and you get a few other features. Uh, this, by the way, the machine translation is also, that only comes with the premium as well. Um, and I'm not affiliated with them, so I'm just saying how much I like this, you know, uh, but I'm not getting a kickback from that or anything. So basically the strategy that I've taken is to, um, I basically will look at the words and the words that I know already, uh, I'll change to green. And you can do that like one by one if you want. I would recommend instead of doing it here, just start from scratch and watch a movie and, um, and then just do it as you see words. So this is a very common word in Mandarin. And so maybe like the first sentence that I see that in, and then I would just right click it and change it to green. So by default, it's actually gray here. And then I turn it to green by right clicking. Um, and I can also just left click and then change the color here. You get a five uh, different, well, four different colors besides white, or this is the default color, which is gonna be gray there. Um, explaining the gray, uh, gray 
either can be a word that's so infrequent, such as a name, that it doesn't even register in their corpus, or it could be a word, I think sometimes they have common words that are gray, but they're common, but they're very infrequent in this particular piece of content. Um, the, um, and then for yellow, yellow are words that I'm learning. So um, this is a very common word, but it's a complicated word grammatically. So I've just kind of kept it at yellow and I wanna kind of review my grammar on a, you know, separately from this tool before I really change this to green. Um, so I have a little bit of a mixed bag here. These are words I just have not happened to encounter much yet. So they're still white. Um, and then we go further down. And then even in the purple section, there's some that are either like, this is a, com a compound word of two smaller, easier words. So I'm learning that one actually. Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, and, and, and then, you know, this one is cat and it's a little less frequent, but you know, that's something I learned with Duolingo. So it's one of the first words you might learn with Duolingo. So, you know, some, some other ones I'll do. And then the cool thing is that this is not representative of the entire corpus that they have in their database. These are all of the words that are in this particular movie, or in this case episode, which is only 12 minutes. And it tells you there's exactly, well, 166 plus 86 plus 46 words, unique words utilized in this episode. So that's, I guess, around, you know, what, like uh, 250 unique words that are used in this episode. Um, and of those, I've already marked 86 or 29% as known and 15% as learning. And then I have 56% left that I don't know yet. Um, and if you know anything about the way that um, words are distributed in a language based on frequency, uh, the fact that I am already at about 45% of the way of like 45% of the words I know, that actually is probably, probably means I already know about 85% of the actual language being used. You can see a lot of these words are either green or yellow, and that's because these green words are so frequent, they're used over and over and over again. And um, the words that I don't yet know in the bottom 50%, those words might only occur once or twice in the entire um, show. Now, to be fair, in a particular show, there might be um, a word that's generally less frequent in the language, but it's more in show. So this one, for example, cat is level three, but it's, it occurs five times in this particular episode. It's actually a, an episode about a dog and a cat. So... Therefore, that word was a word I kept seeing. So even though it's purple, I still was like, oh, I keep seeing that word. So I changed it to green. Well, that's actually a word I already knew, but you know, that's something that might happen. But generally what I'll do is I'll try to focus only on the white words. And I'll try to mainly learn white words unless a purple word just keeps showing up over and over and over again. Then I'll you know, add that to a word I'm learning. But if I, if I see this word once, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. But if I see it a second time in the show and it's white, then I will change it to yellow and be like, okay, I'm probably going to see this again and I'll keep learning it. If I see a purple word at least three times or, you know, as long as I've seen it enough that I've recognized that I've seen it a few times, then I'll change it to learning. So I have a little bit of a higher standard for the purple words. Um, but basically... Uh, there's another feature that I really like, which I originally really didn't like, but now I, I do use it. Um, and it's this one right here, which is automatically pause playback at the end of every subtitle. This is really the best way to learn. Now, if you start to get fatigued mentally with it, then just either stop and take a break and do something else, or you can turn it off and just watch for a while without it on. But if you really want to learn very quickly, uh, this is my process. So let's uh, basically, I can use the keyboard and I press, press uh, it, that's on, so I don't have to press that again. I use um, A, S, and D and space bar and sometimes one and two. So basically A goes back to a previous subtitle. Ooh. 
D goes forward to the next one. Um, and that's really useful just for like skipping ahead, skipping forward, or like going, you know, back. S repeats the same line. So it's going to keep repeating it. So this is nice. So, um, and then space bar just continues on or pauses. So. All right. So pause it again. So I'll be like, okay, this this is a just remind myself that's the assassin so i'm just going to read basically the green ones are ones i should know already so it's assassin for what reason again must um i'm not even going to look at this word here because it's out of my reach so i'll read this you know why killer had to dress up as a dog dog and sing okay all right so that's the context so maybe 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 usually i'll read this first okay and then I'll go back and then I'll be like, okay, assassin, for what reason, uh, again, must something, again, must, um, oh, I think that's uh, sing song, hey, okay, so, yep, sing songs. So I was right about that. Actually, the, this is a word I think I have pretty much learned. Um, it's a word you learn early on with Duolingo, and I'm just kind of reinforcing it, but I think I've pretty much learned it. So I'm going to change, change that to green. Just continue on. Uh, uh, I finished the sentence, so we gotta continue on. It's a little tedious when there's like one word <laughs> lines. You gotta press space bar again and again. Uh, Alright, this is a little slow, so I'm just gonna skip to D, D, okay. Assassin. <laughs> it's her. Okay, so. I'm not even going to try. Like for something like this, I might not even try to learn. I'll just skip it. Maybe one thing you can do is if it's white, maybe just hover over, over it. This is this is even another level, which I do recommend, is every time you see a white word, hover over it and like just mentally register what it means. Okay, continue. Okay. Okay, assassin, assassin, away. This is a weird word. It's kind of a grammatical word. One. Okay, so I only want. Okay, this is actually dog people. Okay, I know that one, but it's a very unique word that's like never going to be used again outside of this show, probably. Um, and that's true. Okay, so I something kill. So. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting one. It's kind of broken up. So maybe I'll just like focus on this part and not worry about this. And then I'll move on. Because even though I know these, it's kind of too broken up. I'm really looking for like nice long. This is a great one. So I already know all this one. So this is perfect for me to review. So ideally, because I know everything, I won't even read this part. And I'll just read the Chinese. And I'll be like, okay. Jiyoshi um, ni. Uh, I, I probably didn't say that wrong at all, right at all, but uh, what does it mean? This only is you uh, asks um, assassin question <laughs> mark. Um, so asks probably means like orders, like a paid assassin. So this is the assassin you hired. Boom. And yes, I was right about that. So um, I learned this word as meaning like sí. please or ask, but um, also I know that in Spanish, like, um, you know, to ask for also means is the word used for order uh, something, so, or hire. So sí. um, that's, you know, so this is a nice one because this is, a, these are the, my favorite ones to review because it's like, I already know all the words, but I've never seen them in this combination. So this is really useful for me. And because I'm also hearing it in context and learning as I listen and learning how it's actually spoken by native people instead of like in some sort of uh, sanitized environment, I'm gonna listen to it again and I'll listen to it a couple times until I can basically like recognize what they're saying without necessarily even reading or, or at least to be able to like follow along at the pace of speech. So let's see. <laughs> Ooh, he says so fast. Okay, so this one's a bit of a tough one. I, I definitely catch the end. 
took them out. Okay, something like that. So I'm gonna uh, show you another thing. I'm not using that much, but is definitely useful. Um, so especially for stuff like this, there, there's another thing you can do. You can press R to save it, and it's gonna save to your like flashcard thing. Um, that's not something I'm really using much, be and I probably won't continue to use that feature because I just don't really believe in flashcards uh, personally. I know a lot of people do, but I don't. Um, but um, there's another tool out there. I can't remember what it's called, um, but this guy basically developed this tool where you, you don't learn words on their own. You learn them by their sentences. And once you learn what an entire sentence means, and then you can re reproduce that sentence, um, but then also over time, you're basically learning what the individual words mean as well. It's an interesting uh, methodology for learning a language. And so for this, I, I, I really think it's a good methodology to keep in mind. And I, I use that a little bit here. I thought about even like saving this, these sentences and like exporting them to that thing. And then it's kind of like a flashcard system that he has. But again, I don't really like flashcards so much. Um, and I think I'm learning at, in a good flow without doing that. Um, but, but this is one where it's like, I want to be able to get the whole sentence because I already know every word. So if somebody were to repeat this exact sentence and I go to China or Taiwan and I hear them say this exact sentence, I want to be able to be like, I know exactly what they just said, you know? And, um, obviously I'll never hear somebody say this exact sentence probably, um, but maybe I'll hear them say this first part someday and maybe, well, hopefully not, but <laughs> maybe someday I'll hear them say this last part, you know, in a separate sentence or something. So I'm going to just replay it, but I'm going to press one. Um, now, well, let me show you how this works. So we go to settings and we have here, you can see the hot key, keys right here. Slow down playback, speed up playback. And we have playback speed normal. There are three levels beneath up to half speed. And then there are three levels above up to 75% faster. So if I press one, it shows you one again and one again. And I'm going to press S to play it again. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so I did catch the entire sentence except for this first word. It sounds like he's saying like a K. Uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm catching the whole thing. Now, remember before I could catch this part. But slowing it down, I can catch the whole thing. So, okay. So now that I can catch the whole thing, basically, I'm gonna speed it up again. To I'm just gonna go straight. If you want to take more time with it, you could be like, okay, now I'll try it 75. Then this one. I'm just gonna go straight back to full, and then see if I can catch it at at native pace. Got it. Now you don't know that because you don't know what's going on in my mind, but I got it. So I could keep, honestly, it would be a good practice to just keep repeating it and, you know, doing that. But um, I do want to just move forward. And I think there is a, something to be said for moving forward and building momentum because um, I don't necessarily have to work on this sentence over and over and over again. I've got it to a point where I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to see other sentences that are similar and work on those, you know, and just moving forward, I am actually making very good progress. And it's getting to the point very quickly in a short period of time where like, I don't even have to stop and I don't have to slow it down. And the first time I hear it, boom, I understood either the entire sentence or part of the sentence of what they were saying perfectly. So that's really exciting for me. Um, so if we just kind of skip forward again, just to give you a few more examples of how I do this, well, we have a huge chunk here which I know, I happen to know that this means long or, gr okay, grow in this case. Um, something, something, okay, of the killer. So I'm going to stop. It, not is I, remember, I'm not looking, I'm not reading this because I have a good chunk where I want to see if I know it before reading this. So not is I only, well, probably in the context, not ask it's like higher so not as only i only higher duh, this is like past one okay and then something 
So I could, some people will be like, okay, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? No, I, I'm done. I'm done. I might skip this over because we have another chunk here. I'm like, okay, that's of the killer. Um, so I might do that or I might just be like this. This is good enough for me and I'm done. And whenever I'm done, I move on and I just read, what does it say? No, I only hired an ugly killer. Okay, so this doesn't really mean long in this context, but I'm not even going to worry about it right now. Actually, this is what I've seen enough that I'm going to right-click it as learning. But um, this is also obviously awesome. You can click the word here. It, you can see its main definition, but also all of its potential definitions under um, its different parts of speech. In Chinese, you can have one word be a verb and a noun and mean completely different things. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, kind of like the word stock in English. We have uh, the word stock can be like the stock of a gun or stock of a soup or like livestock or or it can mean like I've st I'm stocking the shells or, you know, so <laughs> very different meanings. A lot of words in Chinese are like that. Um, anyway, so this is really nice. Um, also, it's not always perfectly accurate, especially if it's like a swear word or like slang. And particularly with Asian languages that have um, this concept known as, um, well, basically, it, it, it's a difficult programmatic problem to figure out whether this is one word or two. Um, and it, you know, it's reading it as one word here. Sometimes it gets it wrong, um, but it's quite accurate. So I really like that. So, um, this is roughly how I use the tool, and I just gotta say, like, it's very satisfying to be updating green to green, uh, sorry, to yellow and then to green. Um, very satisfying, and then looking at this and seeing my progress. Um, and uh, one thing I might do is like before I'm reading, I uh, go to an episode. Well, okay, let me also just say that I first started off at 300 words, and I got to the point where like in any piece of content I'm reading or watching, most of the words are either green or yellow. I'm like, okay, well, it is a lot to add all at once, but I'm like, all right, let's just go to 800. And I'm probably gonna be in 800 for quite a while, uh, quite a while, um, but we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, so what I might do is before the lessons, uh, the episode starts, I might go and click Thank all you. the words and, um, First, just like get a, just review really quickly what they mean. 根本，喂，喂，看来，有。If I see it that it appears like three times or more, I'm gonna change it to yellow so that when we get to it in the context, I know this is a word I should be focusing on because it occurs at least three times in the in the episode. 不行，不行。Show you how that works. If I click this. It's going to show me that this is used 15 times. This word is used 15 times in this episode. So it does that for every one of these words. Um, 可以。现在。So that's only four times. 现在。So and that's also really cool. You can you could even review. 既然我们现现在，目前的情感状况是单身。That's amazing. It, it's capturing the audio of each instance in the episode, and I just listen to it. And I can prepare myself. If I'm really struggling with that word, I could do that in, in advance. Um, so that's also an amazing feature. Uh, but what I'll do is, okay, this appears once, so I'm not even going to bother to try to learn it this episode. So, so that's really good. Um, if I do that for all of these, Ah, okay, fun. Okay, this one occurs three times, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and it means crazy. Registering that in my brain, okay. 必要消失不动即居然 A lot of words you'll notice only occur a few times per episode, maybe only once. 到不如下次状况装群差点群 Okay, so now that I've done that, I've saved myself a lot of time and effort and energy because one of the problems you have with this system is you you're watching an episode and you see this word and you're like, okay, how should I learn this word or not? 
And and this is a big part of my methodology is, is how do you prioritize which words to learn and which ones not? Because if you learn the wrong word, it can be a big distraction for you. Um, and it makes it harder to learn the words that are much easier to learn because you're focusing on learning, learning the, the wrong word. So this word only occurs once, I can tell you, Boom. in the whole Boom. episode. I shouldn't be bothering about learning this word at all. Um, and I can find it right here. Boom. There it is. Boom. So since I've already done the work, I know ahead of time going into this episode that um, all of the white words that are still white are words I probably don't need to be worried about learning right now. Now, there are frequent words in the language, but I'll learn them in a different episode or in a different movie. Um, and I shouldn't it shouldn't be long before I learn them. But um, this episode is probably not the time to be focused on those words. Now, sometimes I'll even go into the purple and do that a little bit as well. Um, but usually, uh, usually I, I won't go too far into that level because I mean, imagine how much work that would be to like click on every single one of these words in advance. So, but, but be aware that because of the way language works, I mean, like take that cat example, the word cat is, you know, it's, it's a little bit further down here, but, um, I can't find it now, but, um, it's not the absolute most frequent word in the language. You can imagine watching a bunch of movies and, you know, a cat might not appear in any of them. Um, but then all of a sudden there's a movie and somebody has a cat as a pet. And so you see the word over and over and over again. So that's kind of the way language works is that sometimes there will be a word that's kind of generally infrequent or like generally beyond your level. But once, uh, once you do encounter it, sometimes it occurs, um, quite frequently in the context of whatever you're in. You know, you're, if you're at the vegetable market, you're going to see a lot of vegetables and you're going to hear those words over and over again. Uh, whereas, you know, in the context of life as a whole, you, you don't necessarily see the words for vegetables all the time. So um, hopefully that was a good enough explanation of how kind of language works. And uh, I just want to show you that you can upload your own videos, I guess. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I haven't done that yet, but you can um, do this. Basically, if you're on a website, let's say like you're on some news website, news. Oh, you know what? I probably should go to like a Chinese news thing. Anyway, uh, you can click this and then it's automatically going to take you to this website and import it. That's what it shows you here. And then you can just go to reader mode and then um, you can listen to it and then you could see, and this is all up to date. If I didn't explain, um, once you've updated the, the color of a word, it's updated in your personal database basically. So as you access new content, you're continuously um, updating your own personal database. So this is an, a nice one where you can see that, you know, Everything's either white, yellow, or green. Quite a healthy mix. It's like one third, one third, one third. Um, I don't know what this is trying to load, but I can definitely listen to it. And then I can, you know, do the same yeah. stuff. I can change the that. Um, and uh, you can also do this on YouTube as well. So this is actually from, uh, there's a song on YouTube. And so this, these are the lyrics of the song. And um, uh, one thing that you can do, music is also a really, really good way to learn. Um, and sometimes it's uh, the subtitles are not provided for the song you're learning on the video itself, but you can like find the subtitles on the internet, import them here, and maybe listen to the song on your phone or in a separate tab while following along here. That's definitely another way you can do it. And I would basically recommend learning through music and movies. I do both of them. And the nice thing about learning through music is, um, well, the disadvantage is that it's so short, so, but they might repeat a few words over and over again. Um, but uh, once you've learned enough of a critical mass of the words in the song, then if you start to kind of memorize some of the lines, you can start to repeat them. And for something like uh, a language like Chinese, that's very difficult to pronounce for a native English speaker. Um, 
this is really good. It's a good way for me to start actually speaking. So basically my strategy um, is gonna be to use the language reactor and for, for movies and songs. And I'm gonna just focus on that for quite a while. And I do believe in a, a silent period, um, which is becoming, uh, there's a popular movement right now for people to like get speaking from day one. I'm very much against that. I think uh, <laughs> my my choice with Mandarin is I'm, I'm basically choosing not to go out of my way to speak it at all. Um, I did a little bit in the beginning to kind of learn roughly how the tones work and how to produce them. But um, I know that if I try to speak, I'm going to be sounding pretty bad. Um, so I'm in a, what, what's known as a silent period where basically I'm just consuming, consuming, consuming. And over time, it's going to be, you know, for example, there's words that sound very, very similar, but use a very slightly different consonant or whatever. And over time, I'm starting to be able to divine between those as far as my input is concerned. If I were to try to speak, I'm, I would certainly say the wrong word, you know. Um, but at, once it gets to the point where I'm really able to divine between them in, in my input, I will have a much better chance of being able to produce it correctly and and divine as uh, you know some uh, divide and, and and you know distinguish uh, words in the way that I produce them. There will come a day, and I could I could do this now. This would I always think that using a teacher is a great strategy. There will come a day in which I will do that, um, and I. Um, so with a teacher, I might just start to have basic conversations, not utilizing anything close to all of the vocabulary I'm learning, but starting very basic and just working that way. Um, that would be a very good thing to do. Um, but because it's cheaper and uh, more convenient, I'm planning on just doing this and only this for a while. And then once I feel I've gotten to a certain point, probably, you know, maybe in like a month, two months, three months, then I will... Um, probably get a teacher and of course my hope is to go to the actual country that speaks the language and that would be the final the only coffin to really become fluent in the language um, but um, yeah so that's basically the way that I use language reactor to learn a language um, it was a long video but I wanted to be thorough so that you can really get a good idea of how to learn a language on your own um, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you later <clears throat>